Hello everyone and welcome to this Amuse Bouche as uh, Joe and Graham have called it which is just um, a lovely word so I might say it again in a minute. So I'm Kay, I'm um, a lecturer at Leeds Beckett University and I spent a lot of my um, past time as a teacher working in further education so um, I know what FE is all about. I was at Bar Barnsley College and Northern College for a while and I've come to talk to you today um, about a little bit of philosophy might be a bit heavy for what you need right now I don't know but if you get a bit bored you can just look at the nice sky and, and the nice plants in the garden. So I'm going to be talking about rhizomes and in botanical terms a rhizome is a kind of plant that has no fixed root systems but a complex network of nodes, shoots and tendrils which span a wide area. <coughs> Examples include bamboo, couch grass, ferns and the humble buttercup. Rhizomes are often known as weeds. Such plants are difficult to contain and if they're pulled up in one place, they'll often reappear in another. So behind me, um, along the fence, there's some bamboo that's appeared from a neighbour's garden. So a good example of, of how rhizomes can't be um, contained. So Deleuze and Guattari, French philosophers, have given rhizome a distinct meaning in philosophy, suggesting that many systems in the world are also rhizomatic. They suggest that generally we're led to understand what constitutes knowledge through tree metaphors. So roots and branches, linear processes of growth and development with some kind of an end point. This binary thinking though is unrepresentative of how the world actually works. As they say, nature doesn't work in that way. In nature, roots are tap roots with a more multiple lateral and circular system of ramification rather than a dichotomous one. Thought lags behind nature. Taking the concept of the rhizome avoids this slipping into binary thinking, as anything can be connected to any other thing at any point. Separations such as those educational silos that we're all familiar with between subjects or within schooling systems that organise children on factory lines are artificial as the world doesn't exist of separate, isolated objects. Realising we're all connected and part of multiplicities requires us to acknowledge complexity within our learning systems, just like in uh, the ecological habitats around us. So these last few weeks have really highlighted, I think, the ways in which we're connected. And a good example of a rhizome online is the social media network Twitter, which connects disparate individuals together, sometimes appearing to be random, but often in a productive way. This rhizomatic connection may be invisible and hard to trace, or at, term, at times it can crystallise in physical ways. So things like brew ed, women ed, um, AP Connects movement, any kind of educational or activist movement where people come together. These connections operate outside of formal hierarchies and organisational spaces, even if they're only there for a short time. Any attempts to pull them up, like the bamboo, will be thwarted as people resist the institutional chains that constrain them. Unlikely and chance connections between individuals might be made. A surprising symbiosis can be formed as those on different sides of educational fences come together. The earth around us in the Twitter sphere may be fertile and provide good conditions for growth. At other times it can be toxic and kill off attempts at solidarity. To learn in spaces like this means there's no planned curriculum. In the words of Dave Cormier, the community is the curriculum. Individuals may forge individual learning pathways as they seek out and formulate new knowledge, but the process relies on relations, relationships, and multiplicities of others within the same space. So why is this concept useful for educators? <clears throat> so exploring education through the concept of the rhizome can help us move away from the binary thinking inherent in many educational spaces, further education being classic for this. The false dichotomies of traditional or pro progressive styles of teaching, dividing learners up by age, splitting the curriculum into discrete subjects and dividing students and teachers can be re-examined when views in terms of multiplicities, networks and provides opportunities to see learning in a very different way through connections rather than separations. What we're seeing now is we're forced to live and work differently, a rhizomes at work. Dance classes on Zoom, a morning fitness group gathering on Twitter, a new crafting hashtag, children learning skills on YouTube, 
parents teaching their kids in a pop-up homeschooling group, people are connecting in this way across the world. It raises the question, what will knowledge look like in this new post-pandemic world? So a few questions just to leave you with and to think about. I'd love to know your thoughts on this if you want to share with me. So what rhizomatic movements are you part of at the moment? How might they sustain after the pandemic is over? What's changed for you in terms of education and learning as a result of what's happened in the last few weeks? It'd be great to hear what you think and I hope this has been interesting and useful. If you want to uh, do more reading as well, there's lots of things I can point you in the direction of. Um, but farewell from this amuse-bouche and I hope to see you all soon.